Hello, how are you? I'm feeling a bit tired today. Uh, I found my sleep has been really off recently and, uh, and sometimes recently in the middle of the night when I've got up, I've tried to do some reading, but I find that inevitably my ability to concentrate and recall what I've read uh, the next day um, really isn't as good as when I read during the, the daytime. So I, I've been trying to find other ways to distract myself and, and get myself back to sleep. I, mean, I think there can be this danger of us readers uh, if we wake up in the middle of the night we're like ooh extra reading time but actually it's not good quality reading time uh, so I have a big group of books here um, that I'm hoping to read during the daytime hopefully when I can really concentrate on them uh, some of these books uh, publishers have kindly sent me a, a few of them I've, I've bought myself but I uh, wanted to go through and discuss all of them and why I'm so interested in reading them. First off is a novel called One for Sorrow, Two for Joy. And this is about a young woman uh, who tries to be a good girl, uh, especially because her father is abusive and violent, and uh, so she really tries to um, just present herself as compliant and helpful, uh, but um, she struggles to do that because of her personality. Um, so it shows her coping mechanisms for getting um, through this difficult family relationship and how she tries to start her life anew. Uh, it has a gorgeous cover and uh, also it comes with uh, quotes from a couple of authors um, praising this novel, um, a couple of authors that I really enjoy, uh, like uh, Buki Papillion who wrote the novel An Ordinary Wonder that I really enjoyed. Um, she calls it an evocative and gorgeously narrated story that broke my heart and stitched it back together again even stronger by the end. I laughed and cried and hurt and healed. I loved this book so much. And uh, also the author Angela Chadwick, um, who wrote the great novel uh, XX, um, she says, a vivid, deeply felt exploration of intergenerational trauma, the complexities of family, and the redemptive power of Friendship. The White Rock by Anna Hope, and this is a novel uh, about four very different stories set in different time periods centered around one location, um, which is this sacred rock uh, off the coast of Mexico. And uh, so it follows the very different stories of a British writer, an American rock star, a girl that is stolen from her homeland, and a Spanish naval officer in the 1700s um, who is uh, sailing up the coast and uh, trying to conquer foreign lands and how these characters connect over time um, through this one particular location which is a really interesting way of looking at different people's stories and how uh, very different things can occur in the same location and um, so yeah this sounds like a really interesting novel. Ghost Town by Kevin Chen uh, which also has a great cover and it's a, about a boy that is born in a Taiwanese family um, one of the only boys the second son born in this family and there's a lot of expectations placed upon him uh, which he which doesn't gel with his own personality and sense of Self. So um, he leaves his home and his homeland and his family uh, moves to Germany um, where um, he comes out and is able to live his own life. Um, but then uh, he gets involved in a crime and finds that he has to return to his homeland. And uh, so it's following that story of sort of returning to the place which you think that you've left behind, as well as details of uh, the crime that um, he became involved in um, over his time in Germany. And the, the central character is called Keith Chen, um, which is very obviously close to the author's name, Kevin Chen. So I'm uh, not sure how autobiographically inspired Inspired. Uh, this is, uh, although the author is also Taiwanese and now lives in Germany, um, and also the author is an actor that has uh, appeared in um, several films in Taiwan and Germany, and so yeah, that's quite unique, and um, yeah, it just sounds like a really good story. The publisher Faber are bringing out uh, new editions of the first books by the author Wiley Cash, who's not as well known here in the UK as he is in the US. Um, I think he's a 
best-selling author in the U.S. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I haven't seen um, too many people responding to his books here. Um, so they're bringing out these new editions of his first two novels. Um, so his very first novel is called A Land More kind than home, uh, which um, is a crime story about a uh, boy um, whose brother is mute and there's a charismatic preacher in uh, his town where he lives um, who is said to perform miracles and is said to perform a miracle on his brother. Um, but this, uh, this boy knows differently um, about this preacher. Um, it's said to have kind of uh, Night of the Hunter vibes, um, similar to that movie. Uh, which, which I love, um, so that makes me very intrigued to read it. Uh, there's also his second novel called This Dark Road to Mercy, um, which is about two sisters that go into a foster home after their mother dies and their father comes to collect them um, even though they haven't seen him for a number of years and, uh, and he um, steals them out of the foster home and runs away with them and it's about a couple of people that go in pursuit of these girls that have been taken away. Um, so yeah, both sound like really intriguing books. I also have some new memoirs which all uh, sound really good. Uh, so uh, actually the Women's Prize uh, for Fiction uh, sent me a uh, Books That Matter uh, box. Um, they kindly gifted that to me and that uh, came with uh, this year's winner, uh, Ruth Ozeki's uh, novel as well as this memoir um, that Ozeki wrote called Time Code of a Face, which was an exercise that the author uh, committed when she just stared into a mirror uh, for multiple hours uh, meditating upon her identity and life and past and history and um, just by studying her own facial features. And um, yeah, she's such an interesting writer. I mean, you know, the, the her her novel wasn't my favorite one um the that um though I, I did love her novel a tale for the time being so i've been intrigued to read more of um her writing and uh, this sounds like a very good short book then there is kerwin the story of a fire by bronwyn adcock uh, which is about the kerwin fire in australia um one of the worst bushfires in the the country's history and the author writes about her experience experiences um, getting caught up in that fire, um, escaping from it with her children, and how her husband uh, went to the front lines to try to fight this, this fire um, and tells that very dramatic story um, from a personal point of view. Then there's a new book which is uh, somewhere I think between a memoir and an essay, um, which also has fires in the, the title, but it's a very different kind of book uh, called Small Fires by Rebecca May Johnson. And this is her meditation on the, the space of the kitchen, um, how the daily act of cooking can um, have a transformative power in our lives and uh, looking at that in a, a complex way. And of, of course, uh, Nigella Lawson um, gave a, a blurb for this book um, and she calls it an intense inquiry into the very nature of cooking and I love cooking and baking and um, so yeah I, I think this is a short book um, that will be really enjoyable to read. There's a new novel called Homesick by Jennifer Croft which is about uh, two sisters and tells their coming of age tale. Uh, there's Amy and her sister Zoe who share a secret language with each other and have a special teacher that they feel very connected to and uh, it's about how Zoe um, gets stricken with a mysterious illness and how um, a, a death um, causes um, dramatic events to occur in their, their lives. Um, so yeah, it tells the story of their development um, from a unique point of view. And Jennifer Croft is probably most well known as a translator. Um, she translated Olga Tokorczyk's uh, novel Flights, um, which won the International Booker Prize. Um, yeah, but this is her own fiction. I also have a couple new uh, collections of short stories, uh, which sound very good. Uh, first off is Gods of Want, uh, which is described as being stories about moths, myths, and mothers. Uh, but also a nine-headed bird, which you can see on the cover of this book. And look at how 
gorgeous the cover of this book of short stories is and I'll fold it out to show you how you can see the, the full bird across the, the front and back of, of the book. So beautiful. Um, it's also described as being uh, fierce and feminist. Uh, so yeah, I'm totally sold, um, especially because the author Brian Washington is a fan of these short stories. Then there is the collection Sacrifices by Rodrigo Blanco Calderon, who's an author from Venezuela. And these are short stories about characters that find themselves because of circumstances um, becoming either victims or criminals. And uh, one of the short stories is about a pilot um, that is near death and sort of stranded on a beach and meditating upon the writing of Antoine uh, de Saint-Exupéry. And um, I, I love um, this book, uh, Wind, Sand and Stars. Um, so yeah, I'm really keen to read uh, that particular short story. There's the novel The Leash and the Ball by Rose Dan al Galidi, and this is a story about a man named Samir uh, who has spent nine years in a uh, asylum um, and has finally been granted European citizenship. And it's about his journey trying to integrate into European society, um, but also um, his uh, memories and connection um, with his native country of Iraq and uh, a woman that he uh, fell for. It's meant to be quite a comic and warm-hearted uh, story, um, but also looking at very serious issues to do with immigration. Walk by James Rice, and this is a novel about a father and son um, who go on a journey together uh, to take a long walk, as the, the title would suggest, um, but how uh, they, they, uh, they've had a very contentious relationship with each other. And also over the course of this journey, they get into um, trouble and get sort of lost. And so it's about how they reconnect um, during this perilous situation. And um, this is an advanced copy of the book I was sent. Um, this author wrote a previous book called Alice and the Fly. And um, so often when I'm sent uh, uh, advanced copies of books like that. It comes with these um, kind of inserts um, which gives information uh, about the book. And it was so fun to, to see on um, this uh, quote um, from people praising the author's previous book, um, including one from my friend Anna James. Um, and uh, so um, Anna James says of uh, his previous book that it's a darkly quirky story of love, obsession, and fear, a disconcerting but beautiful story hung around the enchanting and heartbreaking voice of teenager Greg. And uh, so yeah, I would be keen to read this author's previous book. I don't think I'd heard of him before, but um, uh, but uh, also this, this new book, which sounds like a really good story about father and son connections, uh, but also, yeah, just really fun to see my, my friend um, praising uh, this author's work. And finally, I have a big, huge, beautiful anthology, um, which came out a while ago, but this is the new paperback version of New Daughters of Africa, um, edited and compiled by Ma Margaret Busby. It collects the writings of over 200 female writers of African descent. And uh, so there, um, there are some prose pieces, there are some more memoir pieces, there's some poetry, um, there are from very established authors like Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie and Zadie Smith and Roxane Gay, but also up and coming writers like Aobami Adebayu. Uh, so yeah, a really big like wealth of uh, collection of um, all different kinds of writers um, meditating uh, upon their, their African heritage and um, how that calibrates with their sense of self and um, um, the lives that they, they live. Um, so yeah, really gorgeous uh, new edition that is just going to be fun to dip into and read of and discover um, some new writers or read some writings from um, authors I've read before and loved. And uh, so yeah, just really, really beautiful. So those are all the books I want to talk about. Um, let me know if you've read any of these or if you're looking forward to reading any of these now that I've um, discussed them. But I hope you're doing well and reading good things and getting some sleep. I hope I get some more sleep in the, the coming days and um, some more good like steady sleep um, so I can really concentrate on my reading during the, the daytime. But, uh, but yeah, I'll um, speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.